Give thanks to the Lord our God, for he is good. Give thanks to God of gods, his love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, his love endures forever. Who by his understanding made the heavens, his love endures forever. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, O God, for your goodness, for your mercy, and for your grace this morning. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you are God who is with us, who, is, who, who lives, O Lord, and dwells among his people. So, Father, we come before you. Lord, we pray that, that this morning, even as we worship you, even as we intercede for one another, even as we seek your face, Lord, may you be glorified, may you be honored, may you fill us, O Lord Jesus, with your love. May you continue to fill us, O Lord, and sanctify us, Master, through your power of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Master. We ask all of these things in your most holy and precious name, we pray. Amen. Good morning. I want to welcome each and every one of you for our morning worship service. We're so glad that you could join us online. Even as we continue worshiping, our prayer is that, that God will minister to you this morning as you continue to worship, as you continue to seek Him along with your family. As we begin our worship service, let us sing our opening hymn. Praise my soul, the King of heaven. The words will be projected on the screen. Praise my soul, the King of heaven. To his feet I give you great ransom, healed, restored, forgiven. Evermore His praises sing. Alleluia, alleluia, praise the everlasting King. Praise Him for His grace and favor to our fathers in distress. Praise Him still the same as ever. To try and swift to bless Alleluia, Alleluia Glorious in His faithfulness Father, like He tends and spares us And our feeble friend He knows In His hands He'll gently welcome you to our worship service this morning once again what a joy is to worship together this morning even as we worship at this time or as we worship together whether if it's in our homes I want to invite you to uh, sing along uh, praise praise our God because he's worthy of praise so even as we sing the first song sing this is amazing grace Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who 
who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all kings let's sing it together this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you bear my cross you laid down your life that I may be set free oh Jesus I sing for all that you done for me we thank you Jesus who brings our chaos back into order who makes the orphan a son and daughter the king of glory the king of glory who rules the nations with truth and justice shines like the sun and all of his brilliance the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross you lay down your life that I may be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. All that you've done for me. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquers the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquers the grave worthy is the lamb who was slain worthy 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 god this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you will bear my cross you lay down your life that I would be set free oh Jesus I sing for all that you've done for me All that you've done for me, Jesus. Lord Jesus, we are so thankful, Lord, today for the cross. We thank you, Jesus, that you chose us. That in your dying, that you have made us alive. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Thank you, Father, for, your, for the grace and mercy that has been poured over our lives. Father, we, oh Lord, are wretched people. Lord, we are sinful people without hope. But you, oh Lord, have given us hope. 
you O Lord have given us strength you O Lord have came has you came down O Lord Jesus to show us the way to tell us that we have hope so Lord we trust in you Jesus we trust in you O Lord because you are our way maker you are Lord our the God who has led us so far we thank you father for redeeming us for saving us and that's why we sing oh lord these songs such amazing grace such a wondrous love oh lord so you're worthy of all our praise and honor this morning let the, let the aroma of our praise oh lord jesus be pleasing to you we praise you Jesus we worship you Lord worthy is the lamb who was slain worthy is the king who conquers the grave worthy is the lamb who was slain worthy is the king who conquers the grave worthy is the lamb who was slain worthy is the king who conquered the grave worthy is the lamb who was slain worthy 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 god this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you will bear my cross you lay down your life that i would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. keep light in the darkness my God that is who you are you are way make a miracle work a promise keep light in the darkness my God that is who you are you are here Touching every heart, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every life. I worship you. I worship you. You are 
we make a miracle work a promise keep a light in the darkness my god that is who you are you are we make a miracle work a promise keep a light in the darkness my god that is who you are You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, mending lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are. We make a miracle work, a promise keep, a light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are. We make a miracle work, a promise keep, a light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. 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 We declare that is who you are. That is who you are. See that you're working, even when I don't feel that you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see that you're working, even when I don't feel that you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see that you're working. Even when I don't feel that you're working, never stop, never stop working, never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see that you're working, even when I don't feel that you're working, never stop, never stop working, never stop, never stop working. We make a miracle work, a promise keep a light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Oh, we make a miracle work, a promise keep a light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. We make a miracle work. A Promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 Lord Jesus, we sing the song over oh, people, oh Lord Jesus, this morning, who feel hopeless, who feel helpless. Perhaps in their own life that they see that every door has been shut and there's no way out. But Lord, we believe that you're a God who is the way, way maker, who is a God who can create paths where, where, where there seem to be no path. That you're a God who is able to open a door, O oh Lord, where we could have never imagined there could be a possibility. You're a God of the impossible. So Lord Jesus, I pray that Lord, that this morning that their eyes may be open. That their hearts may see, O oh Lord, your glorious working in their place, in their lives, O oh Lord Jesus. 
they may mean they may not be able to see now or feel now the working of your hands in their life so heavenly father this morning i pray that lord that eyes will be open ears will be open oh lord jesus hearts oh lord will be open and the minds will be open to see the glory of you that the glory lord has never gone away that is present even today so father i pray that lord may your glory fall on every home every place oh lord jesus as your people worship this morning lord jesus we praise you lord that in our praise oh father that we hear shouts of victory lord jesus we hear voices of victory oh lord we hear anthems of victory lord jesus so lord come lord jesus come even when i don't see that you're working even when i don't feel that you're working never stop you never stop working never stop you never stop working even when i don't see that you're working even when i don't feel that you're working never stop you never stop working never stop you never stop working even when i don't see that you're working even when i don't feel that you're working never stop you never stop working never stop you never stop working we make a miracle work a promise keep a light in the darkness my god that is who you are you are we make a miracle work a promise keep a light in the darkness my god that is who you are that is who you are oh that is who you are hey, thank you jesus are filled with compassion and mercy and grace with your banner of love over me i am longing to see you one day face to face and to be with you and then sleep Oh, how lovely you are to me. You are bright as the sunrise and fairest of all. Unto you all the glory will be. You are God of creation. And Lord of our life, I will worship you gratefully. Lord, how lovely you are to me. Lovely Lord, you are all to me. Lovely Lord, full of pure. Worthy of honor and majesty, Lord, how lovely you are to me. Lord, how lovely you are to me. Lovely Lord, you are all to me. Lovely Lord, full of purity, worthy of honor 
and majesty Lord how lovely you are to me Lord how lovely you are to me Even as we continue worshiping our God our Savior this morning to take a posture of prayer a posture of surrender before him this morning Savior I come quiet my soul remember Redemption's hell where your blood was spilled for my ransom. Everything I once held dear, I counted all less loss. Lead me to the cross. Where you love poured out Bring me to my knees Lord I lay me down Rid me of myself I belong to you Oh lead me Lead me to the cross, my Jesus. You were as I, tempted and tried. Human. The Word became flesh. Oh, my sin and death Now you're risen Everything I once held dear I count it all less loss Lead me to the cross Where your love poured out Bring me to my knees, Lord, I lay me down. Rid me of myself, I belong to you. Oh, lead me, lead me, lead me to the cross where you love poured out. Rid me to my knees. Lord, I lay me down. Rid me of myself. I belong to you. Oh, lead me. Lead me to the cross. Oh. To your heart, to your heart, lead me to your heart, lead me to your heart, lead me to the cross. Where you love poured out Bring me to my knees Lord, I lay me down Rid me of myself I belong to you 
Oh, lead me, lead me, lead me to the cross where you love poured out. Bring me to my knees, Lord, I lay me down. Rid me of myself, I belong to you. Oh, lead me. Lead me to the cross. Lead me to the cross, Jesus. Next few moments we spend time in prayer, bringing our petitions and our heartfelt desires unto the presence of God. Even as we spend this time in prayer, a few words of encouragement from the scripture. 1 John chapter 5, verse 21, it says, This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. These are the beautiful words even as we spend this time in prayer. Whatever we ask, God is able to provide to us and satisfies us, filling our hearts with his wonderful blessings. Let us come to his presence, trusting him in all confidence that God is able to hear to our prayers and is able to give us what we ask of him. Shall we all look to God in prayer? Our Father in heaven, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for the privileges such as this you bring before us when we can remember your wonderful blessings and give all the praise and glory unto your holy name. This morning, O oh Heavenly Father, we acknowledge you are the Almighty God, the God who is high above the heavens, and also, Lord, you are very close to us, the God who loves his children and the world. We want to praise you. We want to worship and adore your holy name this morning, our Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving us that faith and the trust and the confidence that we always can approach unto you in prayer. Yes, Lord, this morning hour, we want to come before your throne of grace, pouring our hearts in prayer unto you, seeking your will to be done in our lives. Whenever we ask anything in prayer, you are there to fulfill that, as, that for us. And also, Lord, you will give us the satisfaction to know that my Jesus, my Savior and my Lord is there to guide and lead me and answering all my prayers. With that confidence, Lord, we want to approach your throne of grace this morning hour in prayer. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that you have poured upon our lives in the past days. Your hand of providence and your hand of protection has been with us. You have guided us until now. Thank you, Father, for giving us good health and strength and giving us everything that we wanted. And today, Lord, even as we are here in your presence, we want to worship you and adore your holy name, remembering everything you have done in each one of our lives. We thank you, Father, for each of our homes. Thank you, Father, for the privilege we have during this time to worship from home. Though, Lord, we are unable to come to the sanctuary, you have given us the privilege 
to come before your throne of grace in our own homes and approach you in prayer and in worship. Bless us, Lord. Bless our homes. Bless every member in every home, even as they spend this time in prayer and worship unto you, Lord. Let them know that you are in their midst. You are the center of their family life, taking care of all their needs. We thank you, Father, for all our homes and our families which are connected to the church. Bless them, O Heavenly Father. This morning, we do want to thank you and praise you, Father, for the Indranagar Methodist Church. Thank you, Father, for the body of Christ Jesus here in this place. Pray that, Lord, you will continually help us to interact with one another, continue to connect to one another, especially during this season when we are unable to come together for a time of worship. But, Lord, you have given us the privilege to connect to one another online and over the phone. Help us, Lord, to continue to connect to one another that our fellowship and our church would be strongly built up. Pray, Father, you will also bless all the activities of the church. Even as, as it is done online, pray, Father, that all the activities that we are doing through various committees and various wings of the church, people will be greatly blessed. We do pray at this time, Father, for all those who are sick and suffering. Yes, Lord, you are the God who heals all diseases. You are the one for whom nothing is impossible. We pray, Father, for your healing touch upon all those people who are suffering with sickness and ailments. Pray, Father, that you will be very close to them. Lay your healing hand upon all of them and heal and raise them up, Lord, and restore them fully to your normal health. We do pray, Father, for those people, those families who are under bereavement and are is and are sorrowful in their heart for losing their loved ones. Pray, Father, that your peace and your comfort be upon them. You will console them, Lord, in every manner, strengthen their heart, even during this time, Lord, so that they continually grow strong in their faith towards you and bring glory unto you, Lord. At this time, Father, we do want to ask your compassion and your mercy upon the entire world, even as the world is growing through this great crisis of COVID-19. Yes, Lord, many people are suffering. Many people are facing different kinds of difficult times these days. Pray, Lord, you will intervene. You will support and help all the people who are undergoing the suffering and difficult situations these days. Pray, Father, for all the medical staff, the hospitals, and the service that they are rendering, serving the patients and treating them, Lord. Bless them, O Heavenly Father. Protect them that they can continue to serve the people and bring glory unto your holy name. Pray, Father, for the government. We pray that, Lord, you will fill them with the heavenly wisdom and knowledge that they take right decision that, Lord, this coronavirus would be arrested and completely eradicated. Pray, Father, you will take control of it that, Lord, we will be fully restored to a normal life. We do pray, Father, for every other person who are into in controlling this disease all over the world. Pray that, Lord, you will bless this world and do us good health and strength and restore us, Lord, always. We do at this time, Lord, pray for for the Methodist Church in India, 
Thank you, Lord, for this great church you have established in this nation for so many years and have been using this church in so many ways, Lord, to serve you. We especially, Lord, lift every person who has fully dedicated their life to your service through the church. You will strengthen them and bless them, Lord, and help them to grow strong and faithful in your ministry. Pray, Father, for all the Episcopal leaders, the pastors, and every other person who are in different positions serving in your vineyard. Bless all of them, Lord. Let their services bring glory unto your holy name. Bless this church here in this nation, O Heavenly Father. This morning, O Lord, we want to thank you for the word that you have kept for us through your servant. Speak to our hearts. Speak to our situations through this message, Lord, that our hearts would be strengthened and we will have the receptive heart to receive your word even as it is delivered. Bless your word and bless your servant, Lord. We once again, Lord, want to commit each of our life, lives into your mighty hands, Lord. Bless us, guide us, and use us for the glory of your mighty name. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the grace you have been bestowing upon us through your Son, Christ Jesus. Help us always to come near the cross and remember what he has done for the entire world in the event of the cross. Can you give us that strength, Lord, to draw near to you always, praising your mighty name. To that end, Father, we want to commit each and every one of us into your mighty care and keeping. And we pray this prayer in the most holy and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as he forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Good morning, friends. I greet you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It gives me immense joy to stand before you this morning. As someone has rightly said, faith may move mountains, but prayer moves God. Faith may move mountains, but prayer moves God. The Lord has been so faithful in our lives in ministering to us through various topics in regards to prayer. Like throughout the month, God has been faithful to teach us, to minister us, like on the topic, the promise of prayer, the path to prayer, the persistence of prayer, the power of prayer, and he has been teaching us what is the important in an aspect when we come in the church to pray. So today, my dear friends, as we continue to meditate upon the topic, time for prayer, let us understand what it means to all of us today. As an individual, we are commanded to pray always. But as a church, when is the right time to pray? So here, when it comes to church, what is church? Church simply means, in Greek, ecclesia. Ecclesia simply means a kalio, a called out community, and an assembly which is set apart for God, as holy, as righteous, as bright, spotless, blameless, and so on. So church is not limited to the building, nor it is limited to the number. Because the scripture clearly tells where two or three gathers in the name of Jesus, that gathering is called as church. So today, as we meditate upon the topic, the time for prayer, I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. Book of Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. Let me read it out for you. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. 
All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possession to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad, sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord God Almighty. Before we meditate upon the scriptures, let us bow down our heads and look unto the Lord in prayer. Our gracious God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for adding one more new Sabbath in our lives. Father, as we are in your awesome presence of oh Father God, worshipping you virtually, Father, we believe that you are in our midst. Father, as we meditate upon the scriptures, open our hearts and mind and give us the fresh understanding to understand your will, to understand your purpose and to understand your promises. Father, be the Alpha and Omega of this very service. We submit the meditation and all of us into your mighty hand. We ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Once so it happened that in a monastery, one of the disciples comes to a guru, to a master, and questions him in regards to prayer. And he says, Master, in a monastery we are praying five times in a day. But my question to you this, this morning is, does our prayers are really reaching to God? So upon hearing this question, the master, you know, he took a pause in answering this question and says, I think, son, you have not understood the purpose of prayer. He says, a prayer is meant for you to reach God, not for your prayers to reach God. And he goes on to explain, when a flower blossoms, it spreads its fragments. Does the fragments reach anyone? No. So the purpose of flower is to bloom, not to ensure that the fragments reaches someone. So today it is same when, it, when we understand from this, this conversation that our prayers you know, are the means to connect to God. It is nothing else. So today, my dear friends, as we continue to meditate upon the topic, time for prayer, let us come back to the text. Let us come back to the book of Acts, which is the inspired history of the early church. You will find numerous examples how the church prayed in unison, how the church prayed in, in unity, in, in changing the things, in changing the situation, in, in knowing the very will and the very purpose of God Almighty. For example, Acts chapter 1 verse 14, after Jesus' ascension, his disciples continued one accord in prayer. Acts chapter 1 verse 13, where 120 were gathered in an upper room praying in one accord when Pentecost came. And the result was the Holy Ghost came upon them like a fire. Acts chapter 1 verse 24, the disciple prayed for wisdom. When Judah Iscariot died, you know, they, you know, the disciples wanted to replace him. And for that reason, they came in unison to pray for the wisdom to choose the replacement for Judah Iscariot. And coming back to the text, chapter 2, verse 42, which is, which is so phenomenal, you know, which is so wonderful to see how the early church devoted themselves to the apostle teachings, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and finally to the prayer. So today, I'm not going to teach and preach upon all the other topics, but you know, particularly, you will see how the early church you know, prayed in the, in, the, in the history. So today, my dear friends, as we continue to meditate upon the topic, you know, time for prayer, we understand and, and we know this morning that many scholars call this passage, this text, as a characteristic of the healthy church. So today, if you and I to be you know, a healthy church, we need to do the same thing what the early church did. You know, in, you know, in devoting ourselves, in following the teachings, you know, in, in being in the fellowship, breaking the bread, and finally, you know, being in, in that very fellowship where everyone prays in spirit and truth. So today, as we meditate upon the topic, time for prayer, you know, let, let, me, let me raise a few questions here. 
Why our Lord wants us to be a praying church, first of all. And secondly, why the corporate prayer is needed today. So as we continue to meditate upon these questions, we will arrive where our topic leads us, a time for prayer, a time for the church to pray in unison. So today, quickly, let us see some of the things from this passage. Firstly, the Lord wants to build us up as one body. So when we pray together, the Lord is building us up as a spiritual church. The book of Acts records the mighty works of God for and through his church in the early years and clearly connects them to unified corporate prayers. So it's not just in the book of Acts, but if you see the importance of corporate prayer throughout the Bible, it will surprise you how the situations were changed when the church came together you know, to pray, both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. You look at it from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation, how the prayer moved the hand of God, how the prayer changed the things and situation in one's life. So there is a tremendous power in corporate prayer. God meets us in a special way when we participate in corporate prayer. You know, many of us, we emphasize on personal prayers, but when we, you know, look at the history, you know, the corporate prayers were such that when we participate in that corporate prayer, God was visiting them. God was revealing his will, his purpose, and his very face. For very example, you know, I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Acts chapter 12, verse 11. Book of Acts chapter 12, verse 11. Here, the herald kills James and imprisons the Peter. And on the other hand, he was persecuting the whole Christians. And the Jewish were supporting the herald. But look at the church, what they did. They gather in one room in the house of Mary, the mother of John, in the late night and were praying as a church. They were spending time in that corporate prayer, remembering, you know, the sacrifices, remembering the Peter, remembering all the Christians which were you know, persecuted in that very city. And to their surprise, God began to work in the life of the people whom they prayed. For example, if you read with me, you know, the book of Acts chapter 12, you will understand how miraculously God sent his angels to Peter and delivered him from that very prison. The scripture describes that, you know, in the late night, Peter is asleep, you know, he's sleeping in the prison. And suddenly the angel of the Lord appears and walks him and says, Peter, get up, put on your clothes, put on your sandals, let us go out. And Peter could not believe this incident. You know, he was thinking, maybe I'm dreaming. Maybe it is all happening in my vision. But as he followed the angel of the Lord, you know, you know, the angel of the Lord broke all the chains, you know, removed all the barriers, and they came out from that prison, you know, without any harm. And, and the scripture goes on to tell that when, when they reached to a certain point where it is called the Iron Gate, you know, he was surprised, now what to do next? And the angel of the Lord, you know, the moment it reaches to the iron gate, the gates were open. And, and Peter went on to follow that angel of the Lord. And when he led him to the highway, the angel of the Lord disappeared. And Peter, now not knowing what to do, he realizes, oh, this is all happening in real, in, in reality. So he goes to a believer's house, that is the Mary house, and knocks the door. And there, everyone is terrified. Everyone is afraid of Herod's persecution. And upon knocking, one girl hears the noise and comes to the door to open. But the moment, you know, the girl knows that it is Peter, she runs back to the church and tells, Peter is at the door. And the church people are unable to believe. And they rebuke the girl saying, Peter is in the prison. Maybe it is Peter the spirit. Maybe it is Peter's ghost, but the girl, the servant girl, Rhoda, kept on in saying, no, it is Peter himself. 
And suddenly in that terrified, in that very situation, when they opened the door, they were surprised to see Peter standing physically there in person. So today, my dear friends, when, when the people prayed in unison, when people prayed earnestly as a church, God delivered the Peter from the prison. So today, my dear friends, the importance of corporate prayer is such, God will visit you in your situation. Look at Peter was in prison. You know, Peter was in that situation where the next day he is going to be, you know, in the front of all the people standing in the court, you know, you know, facing his trial. But God met him in his situation. God, you know, broke the chains of Peter. And God was with him in removing all the barriers. God was with him in opening the very iron gate. God was with him to lead him on the very highway. So today, my dear friends, what do we learn from this passage? We learn that when we pray as a church, God visits us. God you know, breaks all the chains. Whether it is no matter what our chains are, no matter what our barriers are, no matter what our situations are, God breaks those chains. And God leads us you know, to the highway where you will walk, where you will run, and you will never grow tired. You will never be tired of you know, running and you will never faint, but you will renew your strength like an eagle. So today, my dear friends, Acts chapter 12, verses 1 to 11, explains us when the church prayed earnestly in unison, God answered them. God showed them signs. God showed them wonders. God showed them how miracles takes place in their life. So today, you know, if you read the book of Acts, it is full of the miracles. How the Lord, you know, performed the miracles in order to deliver, in order to redeem, in order to save the people, in order to build his body as a church. It says, you know, you know in the book of Acts, the people prayed, you know, by kneeling down. People prayed by fasting. People prayed by laying hands. People prayed for the Holy Spirit. People prayed when they faced trials and difficulties. People prayed for deliverance. People prayed for their salvation. And in return, God always you know, answered their prayers and delivered them and gave them the assurance, no matter what, I will be with you. So today, when we look at the broader perspective of this passage, God you know, always has a plan for the, for the universe. It is his ultimate plan to save the whole universe. So today, when we pray for, you know, corporately, when we pray in unison, it is not just for some kind of miracle, but ultimately it is to build his church. It is to build that body. And the head of the body is the Lord himself, the Christ himself. So today, when we come again as a church to pray, remember it is the body. And we are praying to build. We are praying so that we will grow as one body spiritually. So today, my dear friends, we are all different parts of the same body. Maybe we are gifted differently. Maybe our features are different. Maybe our color is different. Maybe our jobs are different. Maybe our situations are different. Maybe our difficulties, our trials, our persecution, all you know, seems to be very different. But at the end, the whole goal, the whole plan of God is to make you as one body and make you grow in that very body. So today, my dear friends, let us pray earnestly as a church so that we will grow as a church spiritually. This is the first thing which I would like to emphasize. Secondly, the Lord wants to help us to grow in one spirit and truth. The Lord wants to help us to grow in one spirit and truth. Here, the scripture is very clear in verse 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings, fellowship, breaking the bread, and prayer. So here, the word is very clear. The early church devoted themselves to prayer. So look at the very importance of prayer in their life. But when we compare our church, our life, our present situation to the early church, we are utterly failure. You know, my dear friends, 
What is the irony of our today's context? That we fail to pray. And when we understand from the scripture that they devoted themselves, you know, it simply means they prioritized it. They prioritized the prayer. They inculcated the regular habit of praying together because they understood the sovereignty of God. But today, we utterly fail. We utterly fail to pray as a church. We utterly fail to teach our young ones about prayer. We utterly failed as a church to explain to the world that the Lord is the creator and sustainer of this universe. But on the other hand, we, instead of prioritizing the prayer, we prioritize our family. We prioritize our education. We prioritize our money and entertainment and, and what not. When, when it is a time for prayer, we always say we have more important things to do than prayer. And we give excuses. But here, the scripture teaches us that we need to prioritize you know, our time for prayer. We have plenty of time for everything. But when it comes to prayer, we have plenty of excuses. We have plenty of reasons to give. But dear friends, let me remind you today that praying as a church is a privilege. Praying as a church is an opportunity. Because the scripture tells us, outside the Christ, one does not have this privilege. So today, you and I are saved. You and I are called to be as a church. And today, you and I are given this privilege of praying. So today, if you call yourself as a living, you know, epistle, as a living church, it is a privilege. It is an opportunity to pray as a church, to pray in a corporate, you know, to pray in unison. So we read from the scripture that the church is called as a house of prayer. Then what are we? It simply means we are prayer warriors. So as we continue to understand from the Holy Scripture that the Lord wants to grow in one spirit and truth, we simply understand how praying in unity helps us to grow in one spirit and in one truth. Whether it is love, whether it is joy, whether it is peace, whether it is harmony, whether it is spiritual strength, whether it is for guidance, whether it is for the Holy Spirit, the infilling, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, we need prayers. And without prayer, nothing takes place. Look at the early church, Acts chapter 16, verse 25, when, when the whole church prayed you know, for the mission work, God chose Paul and Silas and sent them on a first missionary journey. So today, my dear friends, do not take prayer lightly. Prayer changes things. Prayer builds us up. Prayer makes us understand, you know, and, and helps us to grow in one spirit and truth. This is the second thing which I would like to emphasize. Thirdly, the Lord wants to make us understand we are called to make disciples. The Lord wants to make us understand we are called to make disciples. You know, many of us have misunderstood what it means to pray. Many of us understood prayer as demanding. Like we always pray, Lord, give me this. You know, give me that. And as an Indian culture, we always bargain with the Lord. Lord, if you give me this, I will leave that habit. If you give me this, I will attend the church regularly. If you give me this, I will sacrifice this. If you give me this, I will support this. I will do this and I want not. But today, my dear friends, prayer is not demanding. Prayer is not begging. Prayer is not memorizing or reciting and, 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 and presenting to the people. You cannot just, you know, use some of the fancy words. You cannot just, you know, use some of the quotation and pray and impress the Lord God Almighty. No, the Lord will never be impressed by that. But the Lord will be impressed by the prayer that comes from within, that comes from the whole heart. For example, you know, do you take any online course or class to learn how to love your children or parent? No, right? It comes automatically. So in the same manner, when we pray, you know, the prayer comes automatically. 
because we are rooted in that body we are rooted in Christ when we have that reverence for god the prayer comes automatically you know from the very sincere you know from the very humble and contrite heart so today the lord doesn't need any fancy word he just need a sincere prayer that is made in unison the early church prayed sincerely whenever they need god to work in their life for example you see when they were sending a missionaries they will simply say let us pray as a church let us pray as a church so that they will go and minister to the people and the holy ghost will work and the and the people will be added to the church and we see thousands of thousands of people were adding in the early church it's not because the missionary was so expert it was not that missionary was so talented but it is simply it was a prayer that that converted it was a prayer that strengthened the mission work that was going on in the early church look at when paul was in rome in prison you know the people were praying look at the work in jerusalem when the missionary work was going on in jerusalem people prayed people supported financially people sold their goods and possession and sent to this mission work look at the you know book of acts people prayed for the widows people prayed for the poor people prayed for their shepherd people pray for the pastors the leaders and their government so today my dear friends let me ask you this morning how many of you prayed for me how many of you prayed for the pastoral team today how many of you prayed for the government how many of you prayed for your neighbor this morning so today as a church we are called to pray for the mission work we are called to make new disciples you know it really surprises me when i you know go through the scriptures how the lord was directing the early church to make more disciples i met one couple you know I, it was really surprising to see them whenever they go you know and travel in a public suddenly you know sometime they will just stop and close their eyes and pray whether they they won't mind whether it is a park whether it's a road whether it's a, whatever it is they will just stop there and pray and i was so surprised to see all this and i i began to ask them what, what is this what what are you doing and why are you doing this and they they tells us and they tells me that pastor whenever in the ambulance crosses you know as a family we just pray for that person that god will heal that particular person so i was really surprised to see this habit they don't even know the person they don't even know what is happening what is a sickness you know they, they don't even know anything who is there in the in the ambulance but they simply offered their prayers to that very person who is who is traveling in that ambulance so today my dear friends we need to pray for our fellow neighbor we need to pray for our pastors we need to pray for the evangelism that is going on we need to pray for the mission work that is going on we need to pray for everything what the lord is planning and doing in our midst so today the early church devoted themselves to pray earnestly as a church and that is that is where as a result thousands and thousands were added in the church so today you can pray for the evangelism you can pray for the mission you can pray for the spiritual leaders you can pray for the pastors and you can also pray for the government here when 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 the, the lord is teaching us to pray he also emphasizes on the intercession prayer the intercession prayer simply means fall with them show empathy it's not like okay i'm praying for him no you have to go in the same way how the person is 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 experiencing so fall with them i don't know how many of you are aware you know in the psalm bible tells us and the scripture commands us that we need to pray for the peace of jerusalem and as a church we need to pray for everything that is around us and apostle paul very particularly says obey the government be obedient and you know, abide in the laws abide in the constitution 
and I was just going through the scriptures when he said to the you know the, to the church of Ephesus, pray for your government. That time you will be surprised to know the emperor was Nero. You know who was just burning the Christians, who was just persecuting the church. But still, when Paul said, "Pray for your ruler," they simply he simply meant he simply meant that you need to pray for Nero. So today, my dear friends, the challenge was before them, and the challenge was such it was it was not at all digest to you know digestible. But still, the the Paul says you need to pray no matter how wicked is your emperor. He did not say you need to protest. He did not say you need to rebel. He did not say anything. He just said pray, pray, pray. And we see at the at the end, you know, prayer changed things. And today, you know, the, the church that was started in one particular you know place now it has reached to the globe. And today, you know, we are the fruit. We are the product of the very ministry, the very sacrifices that the early church has done. So today, my dear friends, let us understand: as a church, we need to pray. As a church, we are called to establish. You know, as a church, we are called to make new disciples. So finally, as I conclude this morning, this reverent consciousness of God's presence is a pattern we should follow today. So when when we realize God is in our midst, when we pray in unison, when we pray in corporate, when we understand God's presence is in us, we are filled with the Holy Ghost. When we are filled with the Holy Ghost, you know, miracles takes place. We grow spiritually. You know, the growth through daily salvation takes place. And at the end, we grow in that relationship, that divine relationship with God, where everything turns out to be beautiful. Someone has rightly says, if your relationship with God is right, everything else will follow in its place. So today, as a church, I want to encourage you to pray, you know, in unison to understand God's will of building us, God's will of, you know, revealing and, and making us grow in his one spirit and truth and revealing us that we are called to make disciples. So today, my dear friends, as we, you know, close this sermon, I request everyone, wherever you are, take a moment, you know, to meditate upon the scriptures and understand your role, your duty as a church, your role, your duty as a church. So I request, you know, the church members, wherever you are, kneel down and reflect on this very passage. Take a moment to pray for your neighbor. Take a moment to pray for your relatives. Take a moment to pray for your church. Take a moment to pray for the pastors. Take a moment to pray for the people who are helping us. Take a moment to pray for our government. Take a moment to pray for the very situation that we are going through. Take a moment to pray for this very, you know, COVID-19 so that God will soon, you know, redeem us. Take a moment to pray for everything that you are going through. Shall we close our eyes and take a moment to reflect upon this passage and upon this meditation? Our gracious God, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful sermon that you have given to us this morning, where, Lord, you have invoked, Lord, where you have made us understand, O oh, Father God, that you have called us with a higher calling. Father, as a church, when we come in your awesome presence, Father, you demand certain things from us. Yes, O oh, Lord, we cannot grow individually, but, Lord, you have commanded us to grow in unison, as one body, and you want to be the head of that very body. Father, many a times we want to do things in our own ways. Lord, not realizing, not understanding that you are the head of that body. But the Lord, as a church, when we come in your awesome presence, Lord, reveal your will, reveal your purposes, so that we will work as one body, as one church of Father God, and as one instrument to change things. Now, Lord, to make meaning, a Lord, to the people who are going through the world's situations. Father, help us to understand that we, a Lord, need to grow in one spirit and truth. A Lord, help us to understand that we are called to disciple. A Lord, help us to understand that we have a mission to do. Yes, a Lord, at the end of the gospel, you said, a Lord, I have called everyone with the name of the Lord God Almighty. Go out, preach, teach, baptize the people in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Yes, O Lord, we have failed to understand your commission this morning. 
But Lord, thank you for reminding us again that how and what we can do as a church. Father, we continue to pray for the situation. We continue to pray for the Lord circumstances that we go through. Lord, we continue to pray for the government. We continue to pray for every little thing that is happening in our life. Father, work in us, work among us, and the Lord lead us and guide us to be successful people, to be victorious people, and to be a Lord that model the church, a Lord where the whole world will look at us. Yes, the IMC is different. Yes, the Lord, help us to grow in you. Help us to grow in your word. Help us to grow in prayer. Help us to grow in your promises so that we will stand firmly in the midst of all this situation, in the midst of all these circumstances, so that we will come out as gold that is tested in the furnace fire. Father, we thank you once again for being with us from the beginning to the end, for speaking to us from your holy scripture and making us understand what is our calling. Father, today, submitting the prayers and submitting everyone who is listening to this sermon, wherever they are, bless them. Oh Lord, whoever is kneeling, standing, whoever is praying right now, bless them, O oh Father God. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. For our closing hymn, shall we sing, Breathe on me, breath of God. Breathe on me, breath of God. Shall we receive the benediction? Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God or Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, now and forevermore. Amen.